You're watching UNICEF Television. Even during summer break, Devon and her brother attend class every day. Their school is in the Galol Internally Displaced Persons Camp and serves as a child-friendly space until school officially reopens in September. 155 schools for displaced children have been operating in Mogadishu since September of last year, serving nearly 40,000 children who, like Devon, were fleeing from conflict. The current drought crisis and famine have forced the movement of tens of thousands more families to Mogadishu in search of food and water. For many children, this move means they will have to abandon school. Each new family here has at least three school-age children, and there are only two classrooms. Even the students that there is space for have to take turns, one class in the morning, one in the afternoon. They even have to take turns to use exercise books and pencils. Many of the newly arrived children to the camps suffer from severe malnutrition and do not have the strength or means to attend the activities at school. Over a few months, however, with access to nutritional and medical treatment, they will be healthy enough to attend. But with schools already overcrowded, where will they go? An estimated 1.8 million children between 5 and 17 years old are not attending school in South and Central Somalia. UNICEF and several national and international partners working across the region warn that if urgent action is not taken, that number will dramatically increase. So the impact on the school reopening in September is expected to be very serious. Um, we hope that through our partners we will be able to um, support schools to reopen but we will have to um, install additional learning spaces in schools where they have to absorb additional children and we will have to probably recruit and train teachers very quickly to fill the gaps by those who've left. The education assessment team warns that nearly 50 percent of teachers will likely not return to work in September as they themselves have left in search of assistance. For students like Devon, science and social studies are her only future a future she wants to dedicate to her country. I want to be a Somali scholar so that I can help the Somali people. Schools give children a sense of normalcy, returning to their peers to interact with their teachers and their friends. Schools also provide a platform for reaching children with other essential services such as health care, deworming, hygiene education, water and sanitation. UNICEF and partners recognize schools as a way of disseminating key survival messages, messages such as landmine awareness and how to avoid exploitation and abuse. Funding gaps in the education sector in Somalia have reached their highest levels in the last four years. While education cluster partners are preparing to scale up their emergency education activities, over $20 million will be needed to carry out the plans. This is Eva Gilliam for UNICEF Television. For more information, go to unicef.org. Unite for Children.